Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about FHRP, First Hop Redundancy Protocols. I'll start with just a really quick review of the routing from the last lecture. So looking at the network topology, R1 and R2 are the default gateways for our PCs. On R1, we've got a default static route pointing up to the service provider router SP1 and it's directly connected to the 10.10.10 .10 network going downstream. If either the upstream link to SP1 or the downstream link to the core distribution switch 1 goes down, we've got backup routes pointing at R2, so it can fail over around that outage in the network. And on R2, we've got a similar configuration where its preferred route up to the internet goes up to SP2. It's directly connected to core distribution distribution to for downstream traffic and if either of those links goes down it will fail over to R1. So you see the configuration on the slide here, we covered it in the last lecture, that was quite simple. Looking downstream from the R1 and the R2 WAN edge routers, we've got our core distribution layer switches and our access layer switches. We've got redundant links between them as well. They are layer 2 only devices, so we don't need to worry about configuring IP addresses or configuring routing there. But when we look down at the bottom at the PCs, they do have IP addresses, so they do need layer 3 configuration on there, and things get a little bit more messy at that point. Looking at the network from the point of view of the PCs, there are redundant gateways. R1 has got IP address 10.10.10.2, and R2 has got IP address 10.10.10.3. And R1 and R2 are going to function as the default gateway for the PCs. So how are we going to configure this? Well, we could set up half of our PCs to use R1, 10.10.10.2 as their default gateway. And the other half of the PCs could use R2 at 10.10.10.3 as their default gateway. But it would be really inconvenient to set up half of our PCs to use one gateway and the other half to use the other gateway. And an even bigger problem is, say if R1 went down, well all the PCs that were using 10.10.10.2 as their default gateway, we would need to manually reconfigure them to use 10.10.10.3 instead. You saw when we did the routing configuration in R1 and R2, we've got the backup routes there, and if a link goes down, it will automatically fail over to using the other path. We don't want to have to manually reconfigure our PCs if a router or a path to the router goes down, because that's going to be very inconvenient and it's going to be very time consuming. So we want a better solution than that. And that is where FHRP comes in. Stands for First Hop Redundancy Protocols. With FHRP, the default gateway routers, so R1 and R2 in our example, they have a virtual IP address, which is negotiated between the two of them. So R1 and R2 both run a first hop redundancy protocol and they talk to each other and they agree on what their virtual IP address is going to be. There's also an associated virtual MAC address as well and they negotiate on which router is going to be answering on which particular IP address and MAC address. So now the PCs, rather than having to use IP address 10.10.10.2 or 10.10.10.3 as their default gateway. In that example, they use the virtual IP address of 10.10.10.1. So say that we've got PC1 and it is currently using R1 as its default gateway with IP address 10.10.10.1 and router R1 goes down. 
Well, R2 will detect that and it will automatically take over the virtual IP address of 10.10.10.1. So PC1's default gateway address does not change, so it will automatically fail over to using R2 without having to reconfigure anything. The different FHRP first hop redundancy protocols that we have our first one is HSRP, the Hot Spare Router Protocol. This is Cisco proprietary, and with HSRP, it's deployed in an active standby pair. So looking back a slide, with HSRP, if R1 is the active, R2 will be a standby only. So all traffic always goes through R1. If R1 fails, it will then fail over to R2. So HSRP, it's an active standby configuration. HSRP, if you're in a Cisco environment, is the most commonly used first hop redundancy protocol. The next one that we have available is VRRP, the Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. This is very, very similar to HSRP. It's also deployed in an active standby pair, but VRRP is an open standard, so not just supported on Cisco routers. It's so similar, actually, that if you look at the configuration between HSRP and VRRP, it's nearly exactly the same. Apart from HSRP uses the keyword standby, VRRP uses the keyword VRRP. And the last option that we have available is GLBP, the Gateway Load Balancing Protocol. This, like HSRP, is also Cisco proprietary. With GLBP, it supports active-active load balancing across multiple routers. So rather than just being active standby, not doing load balancing like HSRP does, GLBP, you can have it doing load balancing between the two routers for the same IP subnet. GLBP is a little bit more complicated to set up and troubleshoot though, so HSRP is the one that's more commonly used, and HSRP is the one that's covered in the CCNA exam, so that's what we'll be covering in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.